Okay, welcome to a Capital Hungry Educational Psychology webinar on the importance of mental clarity. Uh, both going to be touching on it and the importance of it within our day-to-day -day life, as well as more specifically, the importance of mental clarity when trading, regardless of what your trading style is. So a lot of the uh, various topics we are going to discuss throughout this presentation, you're going to understand and notice that they overlap with a lot of the other psychological concepts that we focus on, such as productivity, um, especially looking at how the modern societies are systematically created nowadays and how there's a huge shift in the majority of people's mental health and a huge decline in the mental health. A lot of those points are still very relevant when you're looking at something like mental clarity. And we're going to be discussing that in more details about how I see it and how I can see some potential solutions on how to clean up your mind as well. Okay. So let's get into it here. Uh, yeah, title page here, Importance of Clarity. Nice little animation. Hopefully you guys like this presentation. I threw it together pretty quickly here. Okay, so nowadays individuals have extremely cluttered and messy minds. People are easily distracted. Attention spans are shorter than ever. People are more impatient than ever and extremely emotionally impulsive. We can, of course, see this with the huge rise in popularity of social media, as well as human dependencies on other types of conveniences and access to ease within our society, whether it be uh, services such as Amazon and people constantly purchasing things they don't need just for more of a dopamine hit and more to follow an emotional impulsive desire, whether it's distractions from various media, addictions to poor food, and so forth. A lot of these various things within our society are what is um, dictating the lives of the majority of people within the society. And through this obsession with convenience and ease and emotional impulsive desire, it's leading to extremely messy minds, very disorganized, very distracted, short attention span having minds. Okay. So the goal of this webinar, the goal of this presentation is just to highlight that problem, make all of us very aware of the problem, the research behind it, the issues being caused by a very uh, messy mind, and to potentially give solutions to remove the distractions, noise, and emotions, and replace it with peace of mind, logic, and productivity. Because at the end of the, at the, end of the day, sorry, it's very easy for all of us to self-reflect and just sit there and ask ourselves, even just sitting in the chair you may be sitting in right now, is who would really want to live with a messy mind? Always feeling very distracted, feeling very overwhelmed, tense, like you can't focus on anything. Like who would really want to live that way? The majority of people you would talk to would of course want to attain peace of mind to, want, to some degree and would want to live very productive lives, very fulfilling lives, right? But of course, our modern societies do not promote that. So our goal is to more focus and dive even deeper on how to clean up the mind and the issues being caused by a messy mind to potentially lead through, of course, discipline and repetition with various productive events and tasks to have more peace of mind, follow more logic rather than emotions and be more productive rather than messy and distracted. Okay. <clears throat> so, but first let's look at the research to see the actual impacts of this new consumeristic society. All right. Let's look at attention spans. A recent study by Microsoft concluded that the human attention span has dropped to eight seconds, shrinking nearly 25% in just a few years. Also understand that this attention span decrease is going at an exponential rate. At such, a, at such an exponential rate that attention spans are decreasing at, that we see various huge marketing companies and social media companies catering to this declining attention uh, span by obviously offering more short-timed content. You can look at various marketing research papers online nowadays that are catered to more 
2020, even 2019 and onward. And the primary focus is adapting to the lower attention spans of people, because at the end of the day, the whole point of marketing is to sell something to customers and the people are customers. So you always have to market and adapt to the mentality of your, um, of your uh, consumer audience, right? Of your customer pool. So we're seeing various huge marketing companies, social media platforms, adapting their technology to this declining attention span. That should tell you enough, right? According to research, our attention span has markedly decreased in just 15 years. In 2000, it was 12 seconds long. Now, 15 years later, it shrunk significantly to 8.25 seconds. In fact, scientists say now we have shorter attention spans than goldfish. Goldfish are able to focus on a task or object with the effective amount of uh, mental energy for more than nine seconds or at least nine seconds, where the majority of human beings are at 8.25 seconds. That is absolutely mind blowing. When you're looking at how developed we are as a human race, the amount of opportunity we have, the, the capabilities of this supercomputer between our ears, and to understand that the majority of masses attention span is almost at the level of a goldfish, come on, that should be a wake up call in itself, right? So attention spans are clearly decreasing. There's um, significant data supporting that. We're seeing that the consumeristic society and these money makers, the huge corporations, they're adapting to that. And the science is also showing us we're almost at the same attention levels as goldfish, okay? Now, Obviously, you have to take that with a grain of salt. We're not saying we have the same brain capacity as a goldfish. We're just looking at the general attention span, focus levels of the generalized masses, okay? Distractions. An average office worker will mindlessly and subconsciously check their email box or notifications 30 times every hour, usually cycling back and forth from just checking on their laptop or computer as they're at work, then pulling out their phone and, and literally cycling through the same, the same system that they're checking. They'll go through their, like a person will develop this subconscious habit within themselves. All of us have this as well, where you pull out your phone and you have this habit of first checking Instagram. Then you're going to go check this app. Then you go check out if you've got any emails. All of us have this sort of systematic routine, but a lot of us don't notice how excessive it is, how impulsive it is, how mindless it truly is. When you really look at the data, 30 times to check your inbox or notifications in an hour for the average office worker, that's ridiculous, right? Who's really getting that many emails or notifications? Unless you're, unless you're Jeff Bezos, I don't even think he's getting that many notifications or emails where you'd have to check 30 times within an hour, right? On, um, on data from the internet in terms of average web page uh, visitations and how long people spend on the web pages and so forth, on the average web page, users will read at most 28% of the words on a visit with 20% a more likely expectation, right? Almost 70 to 80% of what's actually on a website is being ignored. I can personally give you um, examples of this with the Capital Hungry website, where it will say exactly what's offered in the service, how the service works, the payments, um, how you pay, everything is actually on the website, right? But how many people do I show you guys in the banter chat who ask extremely basic questions that's literally right there in bold letters on the website. The first place you go visit to even see how to pay for Capital Hungry or what Capital Hungry is about, right? This isn't because um, something's wrong with your website or the Capital Hungry website. It's literally due to the modern mentality of the masses where there's already statistics and research done that only roughly 20 to 30% of the words on a website are actually read. Majority of people scan it. They try to get as much information they can with their visual stimuli from pictures and trying to piece, to, piece things together. And then that's it. Through that quick scan of a website, through that quick analysis of seeing some pictures, seeing a few key words, piecing that together in their head, they get their narrative. They get their view. 
even though it's extremely uh, flawed, there's so many holes in it. There's so many things that are missed, right? It's crazy. An average office worker will pick up their phones more than 1,500 times per week, amounting in three total hours of just picking up to check your phone. Not how many times you're spending on your phone, just how many times you may be sitting there at your desk or reading something or looking at the charts. And you just like me right now, I'm just doing it right now. My phone's on my desk. I just pick it up and click the button to turn the light on and check. You know what I mean? 1,500 times per week, the average person goes through that, right? The reason why I want to show you guys these statistics is we all understand we might check our emails or notifications a lot that we might not fully read a website, that we may pick up our phone and check it a lot. But when you see the actual numbers, it seems like it seems almost delusional. It seems almost compulsive and, and very unneeded. Does that make sense to everybody? Right? So I just want to give people that wake up call with a little bit of research and actual information about what this modern society is leading to. And of course, the negative impacts it has, right? And you also have to understand the byproduct impacts of having a short attention span or having less focus or being very compulsive on social media or on your phone or dependency on technology. How do you think your communication as a human being is going to be? How do you think your relationships with other human beings are going to be? Your effort levels in various events and tasks and so forth, right? Which I'm going to be leading into the next part of the slide. But anyways, attention spans, distractions, of course, a lot of this compiled is going to lead to a huge increase in mental health issues, right? Yes, the advancements in technology, the ease of access and convenience to various resources and opportunities has its benefits. Of course it does, right? It's led to huge milestones and achievements within society and humanity as a whole but it also has a lot of negative impacts, especially on the masses of society. You know, the majority of people who work at social media companies who actually work there on the applications, they don't let their own kids download the apps or use these various smartphones and so forth. It's crazy, right? You have to understand a lot of these various products, a lot of these various services, they're designed with profit in mind first. Yes, that's great in a capitalistic society, Yes, that's great to promote the economy, but it's going to have negative impacts on the human being down the line. It's just, it's just the sacrifice. It's the, it's the cost and profit, the expense for the profit. You know what I mean? So anyways, um, within this USA, suicide is the second leading cause of death with humans age 10 to 34, age as early as 10, Right. Depression and anxiety cases are rising exponentially in the Western side of the world, in Asia as well, but I'm more focusing on the Western side of the world, okay? Consumption levels of prescription opioids increased by 130% in a decade, especially from the year 2000 onward. Of course, there's a huge push by this opioid use by big pharma, but another reason for it is obviously the decline in mental health with the, uh, with the modernization of society, the consumeristic society, and all those things we talk about, right? New research from Boston University School of Public Health reveals that the elevated rate of depression has persisted in 2021 and even worsened, climbing to 32.8%, meaning one in every three people you see on the street is dealing with a level of depression or anxiety and a decline in mental health. That's absurd. That's crazy. Human beings, right? Where at the core, your brain is your everything, your perception of reality, your feelings, your thoughts about yourself, your thoughts about people around you, everything sourced from the brain, your actions, everything's dictated from the mind. And one in every three people you see in walking in the street has poor mental health and a lack of control of their mind. That's an issue. That's a problem, right? So the research is clearly there. It's clearly evident um, from even the economic side to the mental health side. The research is being done. The data is being collected, right? So let's focus on how this is actually impacting the brain. The way I see it and the, and the best 
um, example and concept I have to explain this is you want to visualize your brain as having a battery, right? Your brain does not have a limitless supply of energy. Your brain already, like we talked about in the previous webinar last week, your brain already has various tasks that it has to um, direct a certain amount of energy to. And then how you use the rest of your brain's energy and battery is extremely, extremely important. Okay. So how it works, think of the brain as having a battery, right? Zero to a hundred percent. Only a set amount of that energy can be used on various tasks and events. And this also means you can't direct 100% of energy to multiple events and tasks. It would have to be, it would have to be divided up amongst those uh, various events and tasks, which I'll be talking about in the example, right? So think about your brain as a battery with certain levels of, consum of energy consumption and how you choose to spend this energy is extremely important. Example, when you use your brain for multiple events or tasks, you are dividing that energy level, exerting from the brain across various avenues, but the energy is less across the board. There is less attention, less effort being focused across the board as your mind is focused on 10, 20 different things. This is going to lead to less productivity, shorter attention span, and less focus. Meaning, let's say here, you have all these various things on your mind. You're worried, of, you're thinking about your job and the tasks from your job. You're thinking about your money and finances. You're thinking about buying some new things, what you want to eat, if you should go to the gym or not, what, what next video to watch on YouTube. And you also have the YouTube to, uh, tab open. You have Twitter open on your computer, reading some, reading some tweets and so forth. Out of your 100% of mental energy, where there's already a good percentage being used to run your bodily functions, you can only dictate so much to each event and task. Maybe 10% is going to thinking about shopping, 10% is going and worrying about your job, 10% is mindlessly scrolling on YouTube, 10% of your brain and energy is focused on if you should go to the gym or not. Everything just ends up being a mess where there's not enough actual efficient energy being exerted into one task to complete that task. So people end up at this stalemate where you're thinking about 10 different things, your mental energy is going into 10 different things, but you accomplish nothing because you don't even have enough energy to finish one thing. Does that make sense to everybody? Right? Your brain has that limited battery. Your brain has that limited attention where if you try to spread yourself across too many things, it's going to end up becoming counterproductive. Okay? So when you use your brain for multiple events or tasks, remember, if you're, brain, if you're being self-aware and self-critical and you're noticing yourself on YouTube watching some video, you also have Twitter open in the back. I don't care if you open Netflix in the background to keep yourself busy while you're studying. That's still taking up some mental energy as you're mindlessly still looking up, trying to absorb some of the show, then going back to your studying, right? Even... I, and I know there's some things that can help you while studying, like listening to certain music. But at the end of the day, while you're studying, if you're listening to music, it's still consuming some of your subconscious mental energy to be absorbing in listening to the music as you're studying. Your 100% focus, your 100% of your mental brain battery isn't being focused on the task at hand, right? Whether you like it or not, it's just the way it is. And I'm not saying that you have to just drill down and just focus in on one book, but you have to try to direct your brain's battery to what is really important to you and focus on one task at a time, one or two tasks at a time. If the tasks run in parallel with each other, like doing one task is going to lead to making another task easier, that's something else, right? Those are events and activities that have some type of relation to each other. And, they, and you can say they compound into each other or compound into further growth. But when you're focused on what you got to do at work, what's going on on Twitter, the YouTube video in the background, if you should go to the gym or not, what you should eat and what you're craving based on the ads you saw, you're on scrolling on social media, you're thinking about buying something on Amazon, you're thinking about your bills. 
your mental energy is just being absolutely dissipated. You're going to burn yourself out and smoke out and you're going to end up in that state and you're going to end up in that um, state of stagnation where you don't really accomplish anything, but your mind is filled and, you, and your neck gets tense and you feel all this stress and you feel like you have so much to do, but you're not doing anything. It's because you're already exerting all your mental energy just thinking about nonsense across 10 things on the board there. You know what I mean? So the solution is focus on one task at a time. When you are focusing on one task and event at a time, processing that step by step, or in parallel with other similar events, then your brain's battery and energy is all being funneled and sourced into that one event. Instead of getting 10% energy in all these six events or 30% energy in three to four events, you're getting 80 to 100% energy in the one event and task you are focusing on. That means all your effort is there, all your attention is there, your focus is there, what does that mean in terms of accomplishing that potential event or task? There's a much higher probability because you're putting more focus into it compared to running like this, right? So a lot of mental clarity is going to come from self-analysis and being able to visualize the battery that is in your brain and how you are allocating the energy of your brain to what tasks and to what events, right? What you see in the modern society is a lot of people's brain battery and a lot of people's brain battery, where the energy is going is being allocated and decided for them through systematic routines that they've been conditioned to follow. They've been so conditioned to check Instagram every morning or watch YouTube while they're commuting or doing whatever, or to check their emails a hundred times, like they said or to check their notifications a hundred times, or to go see what's new on Amazon, all of, their very, all of their mental energy is being subconsciously pushed to all these destructive energy consuming events that really accomplish nothing for you, right? So you have to have this process of extreme self-awareness and being very critical about where you spend your time and energy, okay? So the solution, focus on one task, then you can direct all of your time, effort, energy on that one task, which is going to lead to an increase in energy output, focus in productivity. Okay. And this is, this is, this is a, uh, what do you call it? This is like a ripple effect. This is like a chain effect. Once you focus on one task with all your time, energy, and effort, and you complete that task, now you have the sense of accomplishment of actually completing a task or event that is productive. This leads to even more motivation, ambition, and energy to get that sense of accomplishment feeling again, rather than being stagnant, not accomplishing anything with your mind so messy, right? Okay, so again, we have to understand modern societies. You have to understand there is a level or degree to the energy output of the brain, depending on the task at hand. So going back to the battery of the brain, you have to understand that, yes, how you use the battery of your brain is very important and how you allocate that energy is extremely important to your potential productivity. But you also have to understand that various tasks and events consume various ever uh, various levels of effort and energy, right? The majority of tasks and events that people are addicted to in society are extremely low energy, very mindless, very valueless, okay? So you have to understand that there is a level or degree to the energy output of the brain depending on the task at hand. Very easy to understand as a simple task requires less, less effort, less energy, than a new event or difficult task which requires more energy or effort. For example, let's just say you're looking at a task like pulling out your phone and checking Instagram. That is a task or event that's being handled by your brain. You're choosing whether subconscious or a conscious decision, whether it's pre-programmed or, or you actively looking to do it, you're picking up your phone, 
You're going to this application, you're opening it, you're checking if you got notifications and you check those notifications. This is a process of the brain, a very simple one, a very mindless one, but a process nonetheless. It still consumes energy to a degree, right? When you look at the modern society, the average person is still consuming their whole uh, battery of their brain. They're still consuming the whole 100% energy of their brain, but it's spent on hundreds of low effort, mindless events. You know what I mean? So you have this consumption of the brain's energy. It's not like the, it's not like in modern society, the brain's energy is being preserved or untouched. People are consuming their brain's energy, but it's going towards hundreds of low effort, mindless events and tasks, like checking your email a hundred times, going on social media, Pornhub and jerking your dick off endlessly, watching tons of mindless YouTube videos, right? At the end of the day, all of these events, which seem like they're not consuming much energy, add up. And that's the kicker. That's where the marketing comes in. Because if these, if these consumeristic events consumed a lot of time and energy, people wouldn't want to do them in the mass scale that they are doing it at right now. Right. If it took a lot of effort and energy to actually check your Instagram notifications, like you had to pass some type of IQ test or quiz quick, how many people would actually be doing that? Not as much. Right. Or there's some password you have to figure out and it, and it requires you actually using your brain to unlock Instagram. You'd have a huge decrease in the activity of Instagram because the effort required for blah, 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 because the effort required for that process increases. The reason why people are such mindless zombies, the reason why people are so, so addicted to these new consumeristic and social media events and tasks is because it's low effort. It requires very low energy, very low effort, not much mental stimulation, and you still get that artificial dopamine hit, right? So you have this, you have this huge negative double whammy where where because the events are mindless and low effort, it promotes people to do it more. But because it's low effort and mindless, people's mentality is deteriorating and they're constantly just chasing the short-term dopamine hit. And that means watching more content, spending more hours on social media, and you can see where the vicious cycle will never end, right? In my opinion, it's much more effective for the human mind to focus on one or two events and consume your mental energy on those one or, one or two productive events that may bring you value, knowledge, experience, or skill set, rather than consuming your mind's battery on hundreds of low effort, mindless events. Because what I want you to understand is in the, is in the modern society, whether you choose or not, your brain battery is being used, right? Whether you think it's not being used, whether you think you're using it all, it is being used. Through this mindless consumption, hundreds of low effort, mindless events, even if those low effort, mindless events take away 1% of your brain battery, a hundred of those events are going to consume it all. That's why people can still in the modern society literally do nothing productive and still be so mentally tired. Why are people so mentally exhausted? And majority of people are doing less physical activity, less productive mental activity, but they're physically, but they're mentally exhausted. Why is that? It's because of this hundreds and hundreds of low effort, mindless events day in and day out. Okay. So summary points so far, it is very clear to understand that mental clarity is needed in making logical decisions in both life and trading. Majority of people lack mental clarity due to having very messy and cluttered minds promoted by consumerism in modern society. This lack of mental clarity is leading to an increase in mental illness. This same behavior translated into trading will 1000% lead to money lost and failure in trading. Okay, so now let's apply this to clarity in trading. This is further, all the concepts I'm talking about are even further evident in the trading industry. Clarity in trading. This is further evident in the trading industry as majority of new traders are extremely messy. 
trading multiple styles, strategies, markets, asset classes, and so forth. This prevents any sense of consistency. This removes discipline, promotes emotional decision-making, and overall will lead to money lost. But at the end of the day, you have to understand that the trader's choices to keep jumping back various styles, to jump back strategy to strategy, to trade various asset classes is primarily induced by a very messy and cluttered mind that this trader has outside of trading, right? Especially when you look at the majority of retail traders being introduced to the trading industry through social media, social media, which, which is completely polluting people's minds. We see, that we see the evidence of attention spans decreasing, of distractions going up, mental illness going up, the dependency on these various, techn uh, various social media platforms and such going up, right? So if that's what's primarily happening on social media and people are learning about the trading industry through social media, ding, 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 think about their mentality completely backwards, right? So if you bring that same messy, cluttered mentality, impulsive mentality, it's going to lead to these decisions. You're going to end up trading multiple styles because you have no sense of patience or longevity. You're only focused on the short term. Whenever the one style isn't working, you're going to jump to another one. Then when one strategy isn't working, you're going to try different strategies. Sometimes it's going to be that uh, the pair you're trading is ranging for the week and your short attention span and low and high distraction uh, mentality cannot handle that. So you're going to jump to a different asset class. You're going to go from gold to GJ to US 30 to crypto. How could you ever have any consistency? How could you ever have a structured sense of discipline or a system of discipline? How could you ever make logical decisions with this much mess in your mind? How could you ever make money in the markets where 90% lose because of this? a lack of that mental clarity, a lack of that knowledge and understanding. It's li you're literally already playing a game where the probabilities are stacked against you and you're asking to start behind the starting line. You have the starting line in front of you where you can focus on risk. Like, let's just say you're visualizing a race, right? You're up against Usain Bolt and it's you. You're at the starting line where you could be focusing on risk management, the fundamentals, probabilities, and so forth. You're up against Usain Bolt as well, where you already have a very high chance of losing. You're probably not even expecting to win, right? Then you choose to go, all right, I'm going to take 30 steps behind the starting line against Usain Bolt. Like, what do you, like, when you think about it that way, it's like, oh, that's fucking delusional, right? It's like saying, oh, I want to fight Mike Tyson, but Mike Tyson can take his gloves off. I'll use gloves. Mike Tyson can have headgear on and no gloves can go hit me with his raw knuckles and I'll use gloves. It's all, it's already a difficult fight to begin with. Why are you trying to make it even harder than it is? Right? Why are you trying to give Usain Bolt a head start? Why are you trying to give the market a head start on taking your money? When you think about it that way, it's like, okay, wow. Yeah. That makes no fucking sense. Right? So how to clean the mind, my tips, my suggestions, which is obviously a collection from previous psychology webinars and so forth. In life, try your best to remove all events, items, and tasks that are mindless in distractions, meaning they don't bring you any value. They don't teach you anything. It's not helping you make more money. It's not helping you get in better shape. It's not bringing any enlightenment or knowledge to your mind. It's not helping you spiritually or emotionally. Like it's not helping you long-term emotionally or so forth. Useless, right? Practice and study the art and concept of mindfulness, staying grounded, remaining humble, trying to live as much of a simple life as possible because yes, accumulating wealth is great for freedom. But like I was talking about in banter, you don't want your happiness correlated or dictated on social media or how much you can flex or the materialistic goods you have because then you're going to end up being miserable long term and your brain is always going to end up being filled with materialistic clutter and nonsense and always end up being messy okay spend less time on social media and the internet world and more time 
in on reality and actually developing yourself, right? Go for, I'm not saying you have to go hiking, go climb, go climb Mount Everest. Just go for a walk in your local park. Go touch a tree. Like I tell people for all I care. You're feeling all miserable, pent up in your room, dark room, lights off on these, all these screens around you, screen in your hand. Of course, go get some sunlight once in a while. Do some breathing exercises and so forth. You know what I mean? Leading into the next one. Try or practice meditation, breathing exercises, or general exercise, right? Whether that's jogging, running, hiking, playing sports, you don't have to be a professional athlete. You're not doing this to earn an income through your working out or your meditation or your breathing exercises. You're doing it for your own vitality, your own quality of life, right? Instead of scrolling, watching, and, and being mindless, instead read read a book, journal about your day, journal about your goals, write, write a story. Instead of reading stories and reading about Netflix, write your own story. Use your brain productively. Actively think about a story, the plot of it, what, what you would have the characters be. Start writing. Use your hand in that, in that process of the brain, that creativity. Start writing. Let the pen go. You don't have to be studying economics to be using your brain productively. You don't have to be studying quantum physics. You could be writing your own book about your own story and you're using your mind more productively than scrolling social media, okay? Focus on doing one task at a time as effectively as possible. I think this was Will Smith I heard um, from, uh, this is a quote or like a, from, from an interview from Will Smith I heard about building a house, right? He said the majority of people when they look at building a house, will get intimidated by looking at the end result of a house. Where do I begin? The materials, the costs, and all of this. How do I do this? And so forth. His ideology in life was just start by step one, laying out the first brick as well and as neatly and as perfectly as you can to build the first foundation or the first wall of the house. Once you lay the first brick down as great as you can, Lay down the second brick as great as you can. Focus on that step by step. When you focus on doing that step by step, by the end, by the end of it, a thousand bricks have gone. You've developed full sturdy walls, have multiple walls, have the foundation of a house built. But when you're only focusing on the end goal, which can be extremely intimidating, then that's going to hold you back from focusing on what really matters now and doing it to the best of your ability. Because you're going to be distracted by your fear, the uncertainty, the doubts, the what ifs. You're not going to give it your all right now then. Your brain battery is not going to be fully utilized for what it should be. Okay? In trading, this, this can be translated the same way in trading. Focus on one asset class. One, current, one or two currency pairs. Just trading gold just trading oil, just trading the equity markets. Focus on one trading system and strategy. Do not spend your brain's battery worrying about other traders. Even me, you're paying for the capital hungry service for what? For these types of webinars, mentor reminders, newsroom, the analysis I give, the live streams, and, and everything else offered. You're not paying Capital Hungry to, to see my progress in trading or to see how much profit I'm making every month, right? Of course, I like to show some of that stuff to show the profit and losses, to show the process, to show the effectiveness of risk versus reward and having a positive risk versus reward and how strong a 50% win rate can be. But your focus shouldn't be, oh, hey, gee, did you take a trade today? Hey, hey, Joe, did you take a trade today? How much money did you make? How much money did he make? Are you going to do a withdrawal? Oh, when did you do a last withdrawal? Oh, okay, cool. Are you on a funding program? Are you, did you try this guy's course? Roger did this today. This market, like what, what's that going to do for you? What's that going to do for you? You listening right now. And you're sitting there stumped because you know it's not going to do nothing for you. Right? So, so you don't really have to worry or focus about other traders. Yes, you can interact with each other, 
Hey, what's your analysis? Hey, can you give me feedback on mine? Hey, I took this losing trade. What do you guys think I did wrong? Hey, I took this winning trade. This is, this is why it was a win. Check it out. There's a difference between collaboration and just talking about other people's and their wallets or their goals and their life. So you're, you're focusing all about somebody else's life. What about yours? Right? You're paying $3 a day, $110 a month to, to see how much money I made in the month. That's what you're paying for? Come on. Or to see what Raja's making and market fluidity or what the next guy's making or this marketer or anybody else. But this is how people get easily distracted, right? There's nothing wrong with that in your mind wandering. It happens to all of us. But the whole point of being in a community like Capital Hungry is understanding it's so easy to get distracted nowadays that we need just as many reminders to not be distracted. Does that make sense to everybody? It's so easy to get lost in the sauce nowadays, lost on social media, lost in entertainment, lost in content, lost in your own mind, distracted from your goals, distracted from your own hopes and dreams, distracted from your self-development. It's so easy to do that nowadays. It's so easy to fall victim down that self-destructive path. That means for just as easy and just as much stimuli there is to push us down that destructive path, we need to have an equal fighting factor that says no every time we see that to lead us to short-term satisfaction we do this every time this triggers to do something bad we do this instead right a lot of these psychology webinars in the future they're going to get repetitive but that's the point because people's memory is dropping people's attention span is dropping they this is needed nowadays this has always been needed but more now more than ever. You know what I mean? And the more we can dive deeper into these various concepts, dive more into the human psychology, the more understanding we have, the more tools and weapons we give ourselves to attack these modern problems and come out victorious against these modern problems, right? Not become victims and slaves to our own minds, which you know a lot of people are slaves to their own mind, which is an extremely sad way to live as a human being. Never mind trading, just as a human being. You're a slave to your own mind where everything is sourced from. That's depressing and sad, right? So do not worry or focus about other traders. Focus on one trading style, scalping, day trading, swinging. Focus on one style. Follow your trading plan with preset rules to avoid emotional decisions. Focus on long-term rather than short-term satisfaction. Do not trade when you're distracted, you have other things going on in your life because you want to ensure your brain's battery can be fu fully utilized for the task at hand. Whether that task in trading is live trading and you're scalping or looking for a day trade, whether you're just doing analysis, back testing, studying, reading, that's what you want to utilize your brain's battery for. Okay, everybody. So thank you for attending this presentation hosted by Capital Hungry Market Research. Hopefully you guys enjoy this type of content on psychology overall in life, as well as trading, taking things that I've researched from obviously various um, pieces of literature influences on me and also my own experiences to explain that to the best of my ability. All right. I'm going to save and upload this and I'll see all of you uh, in a few hours for the weekly recap and refresher webinar.